Hey people, hope you guys are keeping well. Um, this is a BMW 330 on a 2008 plate, uh, M Sport. And uh, the problem I'm having is that uh, when you turn the dash uh, fan on, there's no hot air coming through. Um, and uh, it looks like that there's an issue with the auxiliary pump here. And that actually is an independent pump that sort of uh, works the uh, heater in, in the cabin basically. And that has actually failed. There is a common issue with these. Let me zoom in. That's the part. Um, and this is the location of the unit. So what I'm doing is I've bought one off eBay. I will be refurbishing that. Um, so I'll go back into the uh, workshop and show you what's going on. Right, people. I'm back in the workshop. Um, I'll, I'll, the, the, the auxiliary pump is... What I have here is actually taken off, and I'm repeating myself, is from a BMW um, E90 330 diesel. Um, and uh, basically, it's a common problem. I've got a handful of these pumps, basically. I bought them off eBay. Um, and I can promise you that you're absolutely wasting your money when you're buying these units uh, second hand. Unless there is uh, a, a unit off a low mileage in the region of 20, 30, 40, maybe 20 being a bit ridiculous. Uh, that could probably be an insurance write-off, whatever it is. Uh, but anything in the region of low mileage around about 40, 45, 50. Anything beyond that, you're absolutely, utterly wasting time, basically. Because after stripping this uh, auxiliary pump out, um, and I've got three module, three of them. I've been testing on three of them, so so and and two that I bought off eBay, and the same condition. The brushes are worn out. There you go. They're on the last leg, and and they're not spinning right. Um, on the bench, bench uh, multi uh, thingy uh, voltage thing, it, the one I've already fixed is already on the uh, BMW. Okay, but that having got decent brushes up. I've rebuilt it with the two units that I had with the best part of the brushes and it's always one that one's out that's less one that's more one so out of the three that I've dismantled I've found that it's always the case that one will wear out quicker than the other one here so but they're on the last leg so if you're buying one off, off eBay thinking that brilliant it'll do the job you're absolutely utterly wasting your time okay the other thing is that Sometimes this this will seize up, this will seize up, and it'll prevent this magnetic roller to spin, um, and it'll also the, the the pump turbine won't spin at all. Okay, and that was the problem with my initial unit, basically, when I stripped it apart. Look at all these carbon brushes, debris that's been left over, basically. So I've got some brake cleaner. I will be using that to sort of clean it apart. Um, I've got also some brushes, and I've, I'm working. I'm working on a unit that I've already, to be dead honest with you, repaired here with some nice fresh brushes. You can just about see the brushes on the edge. There you go. Right. So I've already repaired this. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to repair this one as well, okay, um, put it back together and, and test it and make sure it's all good. The only reason why I can't use this particular one, it says my, because that's that's the old unit, is that the screw snapped here on the corner. And I don't want to be spending hours on end drilling it out and then reusing it. So, they're pretty much the same, exactly the same housing, basically. So, I've repaired this top bit, I will take it off... Put it onto this and then bingo we, we're good to go basically so let's do that um and uh, I'll, I'll come back to you shortly um just one other thing i'd like to mention is can you see the excessive amount of dust that's been left behind the carbon uh, brushes basically that is just absolutely phenomenal the bearing seems to be fine because it's still got a nice smooth movement there we go okay i will probably replace this washer because it's corroded it's not worth leaving it in there um with with a fresh one and uh it's just pity that uh, i haven't got room to sort of leave the camera running and showing what i'm doing basically but let's clean this it's not rocket science i'm going to clean it with brake cleaner let me come back to you on that okay right okay well i've got a helper in hand uh my daughter lena is holding the uh, phone for me so thank you very much so all, all you can see what i'm doing is i've, I've i'm using 
sandpaper i've wetted it just so that i'm not very aggressive on it because obviously that'll soften the uh, comp uh, the, the the sandpaper um and as you can see that i'm scrubbing away cleaning and cleaning the contacts so let's just do this so i'm not going too aggressive just just want to sort of give you a nice little clean Because I can quite easily sand in and, and get rid of the, uh, or damage the uh, copper contact. So I don't want, that's, that's not my main objective. My main objective is to just give it a quick clean. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. I could do with another course basically. So let me grab a bit more sandpaper, um, which I have here. I'll wet it. And then... You can use water. I'm using distal, wa dis distal water, basically. Um, that's what I use for a lot of my repairs on, on the electronic side of it. Oh, I mean, I mean to say deionized water. But what, th th there is a difference between the two. It's, it's deionized. It's battery water, basically, not distal. So let me... Just be careful that you don't damage, you don't rip out these uh, copper wires, it's, you know, uh, just, just pay attention to that very carefully. Okay. As you're sort of scraping and running your fingers on the side or whatever, just, just pay attention to that, please. Okay, so I think, I think we're good to go. I'm going to grab the brake cleaner. Um, oops, the ideal cleaner I would recommend would have been um, probably a uh, club. What's the other one? The something which is a little bit more friendlier is oops, I've dropped all my IPA. This is this is what happens when you're trying to do multiple things at the same time. Let me clean this bit of IPA first of all. Just stay with me. Stay with me. If you want, you can pause it for me. Just let me clean this thingy up, please. Go. Right, I'm back again. Um, I, I spilled a bit of uh, alcohol, basically and uh, needed to sort of do that so what i'll do is i'll give it a good clean just be careful you're not leaving anything behind and i will sort of put these in its places nice and tidy um that's in its place that's okay <laughs> look how smoothly it's running look at that right I'm still going to sort of use a bit of brake cleaner here. Um, give it a spin. Okay, that's all. Let it dry off. Okay, look at how nice and smoothly it wasn't doing that because what happens is all the dust, as I said before, from the brushes go down through these little holes and then sometimes this will trap because what happens is that you have here, where is it gone? That's your turbine. Okay, again, clean them with cotton bod. Don't lose this rub, uh, washer here. That needs to go back in its place because I've, I've dropped it out onto the other one and I've just realised that that I've, I've, I've left missing. But it doesn't matter because as soon as I refurbish this, this is going into the car basically. So, so the other one will come off. Um, so basically there's a little as i said there's a washer they don't lose that that's your turbine okay do sort of put a bit of silicon spray on this once you've cleaned it properly um run a little cotton bud through here and clean the internal internal of this magnet it is it is i believe it's a magnet i'm not missed let me see if it no it's not well it is yes it is it is it's, it's, it's just you can just about a yeah, metal option can you show me that look it, 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 i don't want to drop it because i'll break it but look it, it's 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 just see so that goes in here and then obviously it's a it's a kind of a contactless uh, design just just so that the water don't go in and uh, there is a little stud here which is snapped off it doesn't matter um, i will find the correct orientation there it is that's the stu stud the, the 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 other mark here so we'll line it up okay and there is a stud here when you put it back into the housing it can only go one way basically you can't go wrong and there we go okay so let me spin this and that's how it functions basically 
Yeah, that is that is you're taking a quite a bit of force here to try and stop the thingy, but yeah, absolutely. So looking forward to sort of sorting this out. Um so the next stage would be is to take the uh put the bearing back on again. So let's do that while you're on the Okay. I've got these pair of gloves and I got them off the internet. Okay, and am I putting the right way around? No, it's the other way around. There you go. It's something easy and simple as that. There you go. And the bearing's fine. I mean, yeah, the bearing's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the top bearing, basically, and the bottom bearing as well, so. But, but the only reason why it's not spinning as as as, as much as it would do because it's, there's a bit of a resistance from these basically so yep so anyway that's that let me sort the other bit out i'll put it back together and then i'll keep it posted but before moving on to this and i know i'm jumping my guns um only because i'm in a bit of a rush basically that's the housing now how did i open this um i'll i'll prob i've got a little vice a small bench vice and i've been using a small screwdriver and and pushing them pushing one side of once i've taken the one side of I'll, I'll started doing the other side but remember what happens is that when you're doing that this side will actually sort of um, start going down so if you can put something underneath it a tiny little metal metal clip or a piece whatever it is that'll help if not you'll still have to pray this off and then once you've sort of slackened this off you can go from the top here and, and start praying this off now unfortunately when they're so far down you can't do that because it's too tight but once you've slackened it a little bit yes it's doable basically now where it's leaped out a little bit i'm going to be whacking it with a hammer and and i'll probably do that now basically just to stay there thank you baby. okay so that's what i will be doing but not going too too nice and easy look just small tap because it's monkey metal it's monkey metal it's nothing nothing severe basically and and don't put them the wrong way around because you, can, you can't put them in fact you can't put them the wrong way around because this only has three groove three bits of these whatever you want to call it and this has the base has four so i'm going to tap it nice and gently on this as well just straighten them up see here again just little taps and it'll just take it back to his I've got a hell of a lot of work go going on on that BMW, so I will keep you guys posted. Um, I've got a glow plug to replace. I've got a rearmor kit for the glow plug. I've got Bosch glow plug. Um, I've also, it's a common fault with the E90s, uh, the uh, glow plug um, uh, module, um, which is made by Buru and a few other things. Buru, if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Um, that's, that's also got to get replaced because there's a common fault with them where the contact points starts desoldering from the pads over the course of time because of the vibration because the unit is actually attached on the side of the uh, engine basically so that's got to get replaced then i've got to work on uh the swell flaps the famous swell flaps they're coming out basically um i'll be taking them out considering that the inlet manifold was brand new and i fitted fitted it myself brand new inlet manifold um i think it, it after after the after, i bought it in 2014 we're in 2020 so it's six years but the mileage when i replaced it it was around about 90,000, and it's done uh, 111,000. so it's only 21,000. and how stupid it is that the 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 seals have started leaking from the side um so i'm going to get rid of it totally i've got the blanking plugs um here i've bought them off ebay dead cheap um that's going to get done what else have i got yes i've got the uh crank crankcase breather which is the revision too in fact what i'll do is let me show you what's happening i'll need to stay where you are let me grab them swell flabs let me let's go out yep there you go with the kit and the rubbers everything that's that that's got to get that. those are going to be taken out um this is the module i was on about uh, the the sorry the air breather uh, the crank crankcase breather valve valve um, that's that's the revision two which doesn't have an air filter in okay um, so I'll, I'll be putting that on but I'll go through it as I go along and do the work basically that's that 
Um, the ABS pump, which is a is a disaster. That's the kit one I bought off eBay. I've got to strip down the ABS and sort the ABS out. It's a common problem with the brushes and all that sticking. Um, so I'll be repairing that, which is a major job for me basically because I've not done it before. But with the technical mindset and patience, um, I can't see why I can't do that. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is here are the Bosch glow plugs six all together and I've tested them I've did a separate video for them just to show you how how you test those and this is the module for the gold plug basically which is a common common problem with the the e90 BMWs basically let me sort of oops you get that didn't you no you did it okay that's fine that was my address in there <coughs> That's the module. So you know what I'm talking about. So there's a handful of work that needs to be done. The difficulty is that these are not too bad. Taking the manifold off, changing these crank breathers and things like that, blah, blah. They're not too bad. But when it comes to the ABS pump, the trouble is that it's, it's a lengthy work because you've got to um, you've got to bleed the system out, basically. Um, I've got the brake fluid, um, antifreeze, original antifreeze, no messing about. Um, Original brake fluid dot four. Does it really matter? Well, certainly to me because I want to keep things original. This is for the glow plug. When you put the glow plug, you it's an anti seize compound, it's a ceramic compound actually. Uh, 10 quid for 50 grand that is expensive. That I'll be sort of putting around the thread and put them back in. You've got to be careful when you're taking the glow plugs because very easily you can snap them. Um, to do all that, I bought a tons of uh, uh, tools basically to carry out those repairs and sadly it cost me a, quite a lot of money um, what else have I got here let's sort of uh, what am I missing I'm missing something else now I am definitely missing out something I've had to buy a, a trolley jack um, I've had to buy a torque wrench for the wheels I've had to buy a brake around for the wheels and then I've had to buy these sockets not too bad and not too expensive for there to take the alloy wheels off the uh, <clears throat> Let me show you the trolley jack what I've got. Let's have it off you baby. <coughs> That's the trolley jack I have. Okay, so it's a proper one, two and a half ton, uh, steel and aluminium, but it's a pro pro series uh, trolley jack basically. Um, let's go back in the room. Anyway, enough said. What I'm going to do is let me crack on with this, um, and I'll keep you posted. All right. Yes, people, a full strip down of a uh, water heater control valve for BMW E90 330 diesel. Uh, the, that daft thing stopped working. I uh, bought another unit from eBay. Unfortunately, the same problem uh, it stopped working. So after, I thought I'm not going to throw them in the bin. Uh, brand new unit would be in excess of several hundred pound. Um, and I'm not keen on buying another unit from eBay because the likelihood of it is that it'll have one brushes basically. So let me show you what I mean by this basically. Look at the state of this. And it's on the both unit, the existing unit on my vehicle, as well as the one that I bought off eBay. Exactly the same problem, not working. I have tested this. This is working. Um, now, I'm, I've, I've serviced this unit. Okay, the silly, there's, yeah, you can see. I've applied some uh, lubricant here to seal the, uh, get the rubber seal. Um, I've uh, planed this off with sandpaper, very fine sandpaper, because it was all full of dirt. Um, and uh, I'll be using, re well, reusing these housing and everything else to rebuild this, the unit. Now, the only thing I don't have is the brushes. Um, I'm where I've ordered uh, to a pair of brushes off eBay uh, for five pound fifty, something like that. Uh, the diameter of the brushes are, are five millimeter wide by thirteen millimeter in length. So five millimeter by five millimeter in terms of the width. Um, and the length of the actual uh, carbon brush is, is 13 millimeter. So uh, let, the rest of the parts are here. There you go. Those are the rest of the parts. That's the that's that's mine. Um, unfortunately, as I was trying to dismantle and take this housing off, I've actually snapped a screw. 
there you go that one on the top and therefore i won't be sort of using the housing unless i drill through that and and try and take it out so it's all a waste of time i do have a spare how how you know a housing so I'll, I'll be using that as well um or i should say the main unit housing is this that's the main unit uh the part number is uh, let's have a look um it's six four double one eight three six nine eight zero six dash zero four and it's a 12 volt pump basically made in germany yeah uh the so-called german engineering i was very disappointed to find that the 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 uh, both of them had the same problem basically so i've rebuilt this now i've got to wait for the uh, new brushes uh once those are here i'll put it back together and test and make sure that everything's okay so i will sort of uh, keep you posted on that guys don't waste your money on buying these units off ebay you're absolutely uh Hit, hit, hitting your rock against a uh, rock hitting your head against a rock uh, rock basically because um the chances are that the the, the units are on, on on the last verge now if you do buy one try and ref, ref, you know service it if not ideally what i would do is i'd strip your strip one strip your one down um and sort of uh, rebuild it yourself and you can sort of find these uh, brushes on online basically what i did also do is is run a test on the one of the unit the unit i bought from ebay that was faulty that was running round about uh, say 15 16 mega ohms the one that was partially working that was running around about uh, uh two ohms basically so when i say partially you have to smack it for it to work basically and that was my existing unit unit uh that was full of burnt carbon and whatever it is now what you will find is that the carbon that's your carbon this is where it sits once the housing is put but can you see those little holes this is where the carbon gets trapped and starts seizing this this magnetic roller basically or spinner whatever it is you want to call it so um, yeah that's that's that as i said don't waste your money on buying these units off ebay uh because you will be wasting that money um i'm repeating myself uh not been sleeping well because of all these uh pandemic that's going on and isolation and everything here in the uk um but other than that i'll keep you posted let you know what's going on be safe, be well, and uh, I'll speak to you shortly. Bye. Video got stopped recording accidentally. All I've done is I've used an, a praying tool and nice and gently I've gone around uh, 360 degree and lifted it up without sort of damaging the uh, bearings housing here, basically. This bit is very, very, this bit here um, is very light and, and, and soft, basically, so you can very easily kink it which may affect the 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 uh, smoothness and the running of the bearing so nice and gently I've, I've lifted it and and it came off beautifully um now this is from another unit um i've just shown it the the other one is over here i've put it back i'll keep it in just in case but this is from the other unit which is not corroded um so let's crack on with this and I'll, I'll keep you updated um just one other thing i've taken the unit that i've repaired initially with the longer brushes there you go unfortunately these are not the correct brushes um and the one that are available is slightly bigger the the size of these brushes are five millimeter by five millimeter and the length is in the region of say about 11 mil or maybe 10 mil um so don't get anything that's longer than that if you do get anything longer than that you can always sort of shred it down to the size that's required um these ones have come i've bought them off ebay for five pound 49 pence or something like that it's about six quid something like this um and uh where you can see this nice little curve groove here and there i've had to create it with me yeah multi-tool here so i've used this to create that bit of groove it was flat it doesn't necessarily matter but i'm a bit of a perfectionist freak so i would like things to be the right way okay now the other thing what i've done is i've actually tested i've plugged it into the uh, bench power supply let me just remove some of these uh, documents here so you're not peeking at me stuff anyway bench power supply set it to even one volt um and once this is fully functioning you'll see a small spin even as low as one volt it should do that because it, i've refurbished the other one and it's done it for me so it should work on this as well um and i've i've probed 
I've connected this onto the bench power supply th on, on uh, through this and I am getting reading at the tip of the carbon contacts basically so that means that the repair attempt what I've made is 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 absolutely fine um, so let's move on to the next stage um, unfortunately because of the way things are I'm, I'm gonna have to sort of uh, record once I've done what I needed to do but I will discuss it prior which I have been see this bit I'm gonna give you a little sand down with a very th uh, thin sandpaper just so that I can clean up the contacts before sort of putting this back together um, secondly this o-ring I'll take this o-ring give it a good a quick clean I will put a bit of Vaseline around this um, just to make it seal a little bit better not the fact that it needs to be absolutely 100% watertight because this housing should uh, prevent any water going in um, here so as long as I seal this bit uh, this bit here, oops, out of focus, this bit here should be fine. So uh, let me do this sanding side and I'll, I'll keep updated. All right, quickly coming back onto this, I've given this, I've taken the rubber seal out, given it a good clean and then re-lubricated it with this uh, WD silicon spray, basically. Uh, I wouldn't use WD on its own. This is, this is pretty, pretty smart. So I would strongly recommend you just use this, basically, on seals and things like that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand this bit here, the face of this basically, just so that I, when I put the the housing back on, it's a nice snug fit, basically. So I'm going to do that now, um, and the way I would do this is just very easy. Grab yourself a piece of sandpaper. Let's remove all this basically. For example, here, on a flat piece of surface. I'm going to have to take the camera, my daughter's gone off basically, so, uh, and then all I'm going to do is grab it and just go like this, but I'll have to hold the sandpaper, I've got, I've got to grab a bigger piece than this, and just keep on sanding, sanding like, like this sort of movement, um, just pretend that this is a sandpaper, and this is what I'm doing, so I get a nice flat finish, let me zoom out, um, like this, and hopefully I'll get a very, it might take me a good few minutes to get a good, a good finish on it, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now, alright? So this is what I meant. I've got my daughter Lena back again. She's come back to give me a hand. But I'm not going to keep her too long. Once you've done this for several minutes, keep on inspecting. And as you can see, that is nice and polished look. Okay, you don't want to be using a, any other aggressive method. And then once you've got a little bit left on the corner, the way I deal with this is basically, let's grab another sandpaper. I'm going to use the bin just so that I'm not leaving any dirt. And just, just over it like this it doesn't have to be 100% perfect guys you know Go back here. Give it a couple more turns. I'm quite satisfied with that. All right. Okay. So that sandpaper goes in the bin. This bit goes in the bin. I'm going to get the brake cleaner and just get rid of all the excess dust off it. It's very important that you clean it out because you don't want to leave those Okay Let's Give it a spin Happy. Give it another spin. There's not much of a play, just do pay attention to the play on the thingy. You'll have a little bit of a play at the bottom bearing inside this housing here. But on the top, again, very little play. So do sort of bear in mind if you know keep an eye on them. If there's too much of a play, then you'll you'll end up sort of replacing them. If they're seized up, then obviously you'll have to replace them as well. Um, so we're near to the finish. I'll just wait for this uh, uh, brake cleaner to dry off and let's uh, so that's been done that's already prepped uh, this is going to be a tricky one because 
initially when you've got the original one and you're praying it off with the once it's attached on in the housing and you're praying it off you're actually sort of bringing them out of the housing like this so one because they're already so far thingy it'll come out and eventually start twisting like this and by doing so it releases the bearing coming out now there is an oh, there's a there's a washer here it's a compressed washer that comes out by knocking it out from this end there is even a possibility that the, the manufacturers actually sort of uh, puts this through with the bearing and and and, and then knock and and then somehow clip this little black thing here from the top while the whole unit is assembled and then just just press that in basically there is a possibility of them doing that uh, but i'm not going to go through the mither of all that i'm going to take an easy route out and hopefully that should resolve the problem um, nice and smooth um, there you go look at that it's just beautifully sp spinning basically i will sort of give this a bit of a clean since i'm i'm on it this bit here just so that Look at those. Look at that. So I should have done that actually. It didn't. It didn't came about. Look at all that dust. Why? No, I'm not cutting into the steel. It's a steel scissor. Grab something else. Now the problem I have is that I shouldn't be doing this, but perfection is sometimes when you're trying to do something absolutely perfect, you can go, you can make a horrible mistake and you checkmate. Um, but I have a habit of doing this all the time so let me use a bit more brake cleaner okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a bit of this and just spin it just so that nothing gets stuck you don't have to do that but that's just my way of being over cautious basically Yeah, okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to stop the video, move on to the next bit, and then I'll catch up with you very shortly. Okay, so coming on to the main unit, okay. These are not the right type of brushes that I should be using, basically, but I just can't source them any f from anywhere at the moment in the UK, apart from AliExpress, which I will be doing later on. Um, I might even consider refurbishing these these units on, on, on a long-term basis because I know exactly what I'm doing with them. Um, now, the, 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 the copper core should actually come out from here. That's what the original ones are, about there, not from the tip. This is why there's a bit of a bending that's taking place. Plus, I've, got to, I've had to shorten the length of the uh, brushes, basically. But the ones what you need to look out for and, and to buy is, the, uh, is these. This groove is where the spring sits on the top, so the spring here. You can just about see the spring basically that, that the, the tip of that actually presses down on the thingy so it makes contact with the motor this is the groove i've had to cut the groove because this didn't have a groove on um i'll probably show you under the microscope you just bear with me uh, but see what i mean by this oh come on see it comes from the side rather than the top and that's what you're after basically i try and find them um people that are selling on the internet on ebay in, in, in the uk is just ripping people off basically absolutely expensive they're, they're not expensive parts they're very inexpensive few quid and you can get a pack of 10s and 20s from uh Ali, Ali, aliexpress basically so let me sort of show you under the microscope um what i'm on about and how i'm going to sort of try and attempt to s put this on so let me go you get see what's happening it's resting just about there now if i can just get this inside the bearing and smack you on the other side the spring will automatically go into this groove basically that groove what i've created that's what it should go automatically and same applies to the other side as well there you go can you see the spring resting just on the outer edge basically so fingers crossed let's see what how this attempt works um if it doesn't then then i'll have to approach it differently so what i will be doing is i'll be 
whoops, that spring is just falling off. What I will be doing is let me, uh, that spring has fallen off. So what I will be doing is let me sort of put it here. I hope that this doesn't come off when I'm putting it on. And then I'll, I'll try and drop this in and then smack it either side and just hope for the best that it sticks out basically. If not, I'll have to um, uh, make, make an alternative approach basically. So stay with me, cheers. Right, going back onto the reassembling the unit, I've already put this on. I'm not going to sort of punch them down, these little pieces here. Um, I'm going to wait till I've put the, the top unit in. But before you do so, that this little clip actually goes here. So do sort of remember to put it in there, basically. Don't sort of uh, throw this away and lose it. It goes in there, basically. All right. Right, what I've done here is I've uh, applied a bit of Vaseline around this seal, and not on the inside of the housing, just around and uh, just about on the edge, inner side of the ring itself, just to soften it up a little bit, because that's what Vaseline is good at doing. Um, and uh, this was actually stuck on with something. It could have been some sort of a silicon or something, factory silicon. I shouldn't have taken it off, but I was tempted to sort of get it, giving it a clean and put it back on. So, uh, but it's, it's off now, who cares? We'll just have to sort of uh, utilize it as it is. So that's what's going on here now. What I'm gonna do now is just try and reassemble the unit. So um, it's just pity that uh, I'm gonna have to sort of do it and then show you, uh, talk, talk you through it basically. So just bear with me, cheers. Um, I could not put these uh, on because the, the spring is, is far out and, and these are sticking out so as soon as I try to put the case in they just uh, this they're getting pushed in and the spring is sort of uh, clipping away so what I'm going to do I'm, I'm blocking the bearing going in so what I'm going to do approach number two would be to I'm going to punch this out basically this pressed uh, washer I'm going to punch it out um, and then sort of uh, try and put the bearing uh, inside the housing first and then sort of knocking this uh, thing in place where is it gone knocking this washer through that thing basically so i'll be putting everything in i'll keep you posted let me knock this out first and then I'll, I'll let you know what i'm what i'm doing now okay i've just knocked this out with a little bit like this this is too big so i couldn't use that and i've had to use this so on the vise gone in like this tapped it through it dropped out and that's the end of it basically so i'm going to move on to the next phase once you've knocked it through do put this in in the correct orientation otherwise it'll be an absolute nightmare putting this on it's not going to fit so look at the way I've, I've 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 put it put it inside basically now i'm going to put the bearing in um and i need somebody holding the camera basically so yeah you get the idea i'm going to put the bearing in um but before then this has to go in Okay, again, it's difficult to sort of hold the camera and do it. I need my both hands. So I'll, I'll just, just, uh, let me see if I can do this. Um, okay, that's, I think that'd be better. That, let's, let's see. So let me move the brushes out the side. So I can drop this in. It's a little bit of a fiddly job, but the very, the, the, the issue here is that this pump is probably worth at the main agent brand new um, at least about 200 250 quid uh, plus that so it's well worth an attempt to repair this is what I've done okay now I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the bearing right so okay let's uh, wiggle the bearing in its position properly Okay, and there you go. Let's see. There you go. That's the bearing that's gone in. From the top view, you can see that the clip is there. Okay, so we can line this up like that. But now it's the time to sort of reload the springs. Um, but unfortunately, you're just going to have to bear with me because uh, it's a bit of a fiddly type of a work, basically. But I'll, I'll try my very best to explain and show you what's been done to it anyway. So let me create the tension on those and then the, the 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 thing to bear in mind is that you've still got to go through this because when those brushes are um the springs are on the brushes and pushing it down it it'll come right in the center so you still got to work around this now 
hopefully I should have a method. I'm going to use some uh, tape, um, like a, a solid uh, clear tape or some sort of a plastic um, uh, pieces that I'm going to leave in bit between probably heli helicopter tape what I've got there and just just stick it there until it holds it in place and then I'm going to pull him out as I'm sort of once it's sat in his once it's gone in the position basically but let's see how it works out anyway okay what's happening here is I'm, I'm a different approach okay um, I'm, I've attached uh, the fishing wire what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it and pull on the springs as I'm sort of uh, pull, pushing this housing back in on both sides simultaneously and just see how that works out basically it's a trial and error as i said i've refurbished the other unit with the um copper brushes that are a lot lot ha less than half that left on it so it was a lot easier to do that that's no big deal but with these with the vinyl full brushes i don't think these these are made to uh, a sort of a serviceable part but it's worth saving 200 pound now others might turn around and say sod all this right i'll just put a bypass just put up join the both pipe uh together and just bypass the system well you can do that if you wanted to but the, the pump is there for a purpose um but yeah let me see how we go in with that and i'll keep you posted right i'm just putting it back together i will try and explain what had to be done to try and get these brushes in these units are designed in a such a way that it's non-serviceable but for me I don't give up that easily, so that's that's nearly uh, 250 300 pound saved basically. And this pump, we did put a new set of uh, brushes in, and uh, it's working like magic. And I'll demonstrate that very shortly. But let me just show you what I'm doing now. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't, couldn't show you the repair because I didn't have anybody to give me a hand. Uh, now I have somebody who's available. So, what I'm doing is I'm just tapping these in. Um, Get your wider view there we go and i think you can just about see let's just keep all that disguised okay so i'll inspect the unit not to press it too hard otherwise you'll warp warp the uh thingy basically uh the housing so do pay a lot of attention to that i'm going to inspect it and make sure that this is okay uh, i still feel that i can tap it in a little bit more so what i'm going to do is see that the base is stronger than the housing here that is stronger so you can sort of put the vice on but not with an excessive force i can actually see that this is not closed off fully so there we go so i, I need to let's see if i can get a better clip there you go so they they need to flush fit so i'm going to do that Let's just uh, see if I can, I put it vertically just so that, ah, uh, right, okay, it's not going to work, is it? No, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to put it back down again. What's this tape? That tape is I tried drilling a hole and then pulling the strings out um, and then keep the keep the stress on the uh, on those springs. But unfortunately that didn't work so it's a tiny little hole i've patched it up with a bit of captain tape and a bit of aluminium foil who cares it's my own car so i don't give a monkey about what it looks and when it's under the bonnet who cares as long as it's repaired and as long as i've saved a silly amount of money for this uh, pump right that's been taken care of i'm quite happy i'm going to move on to the other side just give it a small tap okay inspect it don't smack on that notebook. yep quite happy with that and i uh, just need to give it a knock on this one so there's three on the top and four on the bottom basically let's just give it a quick tap on that okay bravo right i'm quite happy with this it's nice and soft but i'll still put a bit of layer of vaseline on the outer side um, um let's uh just a bit wary with this bit here that one at the bottom um so what i'm going to do is i need somebody to just press onto this basically because it's hard sort of can you just press on this for me please no on this one there yeah uh, it's harder okay okay let go Okay, that's better. Um, 
I'm going to go around some of these edges because I'm it's all right, but I'm still going to do it just to sort of uh, make sure that it's done right. Because when you're rushing. Yeah, probably just a one off couple of more tabs here. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Let's not sort of try to make things perfect because every time I try to make things perfect, uh, well, I won't say every time, a lot of the time, uh, it turns out to be a cock and balls basically. So, right, okay, coming back onto testing the unit, right, okay, let's power it up. So first thing first is that once you put, once this has been put back together, um, you will need to put this back. Um, and obviously I'm going to put a layer of thin layer of Vaseline around here and the uh, and this side as well uh, Make sure that this is not broke Okay, because I did drop it. So this stud and there's a little stud that's broken off here There they will go like this and then your Turbine but remember to put the washer in otherwise it'll be hell of a lot noisy this washer in there once that's in there Okay, it'll be nice and smooth. Let's test it so the operation voltage for this on the uh, actual part is 12 volt. So it says 12 volt here. Bosch, 12 volt. Okay. But from the BMW, it comes out as 14 volt. But it, it should be that, that sort of temp, uh, voltage difference should be tolerable by the motor. You know, but it may wear out the motor quicker. Right. So let's hook this up. Um, there you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's because of the housings thingy, not because of that. Hang on. Because of this bloody friggin' thing. Yep, that, that. Not really happy with the way it's running, but let's see what's going on here. Give it a quick clean, and I might have to put a bit of uh, silicon spray in there. Just give this a bit of a clean because there's been a lot of uh, chopping and this and that and drilling, so there's possibilities that uh, there may be metal comp compounds there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I did drop this before, so there is a possibility that this might be damaged. I'll grab the one from the previous unit. All right, okay, that was from the previous unit, and test it. If need being, I can always utilize this one. <clears throat> See how smooth it is, so that's how it should be. Okay, let's uh, find the orientation, which is that's the correct orientation, and that's how it should be working. So let's uh, see the smooth operation. Yeah, so by me, by me dropping this shit, I think it's bent. Something must have happened. Anyway, that's not the point. I'm glad I've got to had a spare one. So look at the speed, right? Look at the voltage it's running at. Five volt. It's spinning at five volt. Watch what happens as I drop it to one volt. It'll still spin. What does that tell you? That the work has been very successful right so at one volt it's spinning i'm going to increase it to two volt and it gets faster i'm going to increase it to three volt four volt five volt six volt seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and it'll do that because the housing needs to be put back to place, basically. That, that, I believe that's what the case is. That's why it's doing what it's doing. I've got to put this housing back on. So I'll, I'll take another video shoot, shoot once I put the housing and test it. But let me just sort of uh, put it back together and I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay. Right. Coming on, putting this washer, which I took just to sort of see what, um, well, to put those clips and make sure that those clips are uh, pushed in this little thing. Um, and I would like to do... A better video than this but unfortunately we'll see how things goes plans out basically yeah that clip sorry that so once the bearing is in through that you can actually 
punch this in into his position basically um, so that's been done um, now I've sort of put this back in his place with a little thing this is actually a uh, bit for the screwdriver holder um, just held it against and just tapped it on the top nice and gently there's no need to put excessive force in um, and that's put put the cap on now I'm going to put the assembly back together and I'll t do a final test on it so uh, just do bear with me people um, it has been an absolute mission fix trying to sort of uh, fix this pump um, because these pumps are not designed to be serviceable <coughs> um, and various methods have been applied in the end I had to use these uh, fishing uh, line to try and pull them out uh, on several attempts um, I finally managed to get through and get them pulled out as well so the motor is working now with the new set of brushes um, I shall sort of demonstrate this to you right now just bear with me let me just put put, put these in there um, what I'm doing now as I'm shooting this video clip just bear with me let me see if I can put these uh, yep things in there I've made them just to test these okay and uh, let me put this cover in its place um, where is it where is it where is it the stud that's broken off is here on that side okay and I'll put this in fact I'm not going to put this because in case it drops out I'll break it so I'll put the one that I fixed initially which was I dropped it and I broke it basically so right here we go okay and I think it's got a bad contact somewhere yep it must have that's rattling away probably because it's whoa 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 fucking hell fucking hell oh shit yep as you can see here uh, after rebuilding the uh, valve um, it's working, it's drawing 12 volts, set at 12 volts, it's drawing 0 0.24 3 amp basically um, and as you can see it's, it's, it's working that so absolutely magic, like I said if you've got the technical mindset rebuild the unit um, and uh, you should be fine with it basically things to bear in mind is that uh, once you've successfully rebuilt the unit uh, one of the tests I would do is if, I, if you have a bench power supply is this Okay, so it's set at zero volt. Watch what happens as I increase the voltage on the uh, on the. Uh, div Let me see if I can grab. Okay, so watch. It should start working from one volt. See, it starts spinning. Um, I'm going to increase the voltage again. Two volt, three volt, four volt, five volt, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 12 um, on the BMW um, loom it's only two two pin basically connect to this um, it comes up to about 14 volt so let's let's ramp it up to 14 volt and that explains why the bloody thing the brushes were dying out on them quite significantly because of, of the voltage that's coming out of the loom basically and I think that's by default that's what it is but it says 12 volt on the pump uh, maybe minimum volt is 12 volt for it to work but that that's that's bullshit because um, it's, it's working fine on as, as, as low as look let's drop it down to about 2 volt and look it's still spinning it's spinning but slow and that's on 2, two volt basically so uh, it looks a bit slow, but it's actually spinning quite a little fast. It's just the way the camera's uh, um, taking the thingy um, shot, basically. Uh, the frame rates, basically. So, yeah, that's that. As you can see, that the unit has been put together. You can hear the noise. There you go. And it's on a full 12 volt. I'll put it up to 14 volt, what the BMW's loom supplies. There you go. That's 14 volt no rattling no nothing basically um, as i said that it's because of the housing's not been put back in place that's why it was making that noise so now the housing's been put back in its place um and it's nice and quiet regardless of what orientation you lift it's done so i brought back life to this uh 
pump which is going to get installed tomorrow um, and hopefully I can stop worrying about that then but uh, there we go I'm going to leave it running on 12 volt or probably about say 8 volt just let it break in with those brushes um, for maybe half an hour 20 minutes and uh, then it'll be ready to be fitted onto the car tomorrow so uh, on my next video I'll try my very best to demonstrate how uh, this is the how I managed to work with the brushes but this was a, a kind of a trial and error um, and it worked out brilliantly take care guys bye for now right people um, the auxiliary pump has been repaired with the new brushes these are non non serviceable units but I've had I've had to do some tricks and trade trade to try and get it repaired that's working with new brushes now uh, but that helps the uh, cabin uh, heater basically it's just the uh, water f flows into the uh, cabin itself there's another another radiator or whatever it is that's in there basically uh, I can't think of the name I believe the system after doing so um, now moving on to this side this um, crank case breather which have been replaced as well I put the mileage and the date when it's been replaced um, so if I do in an event of selling the car somebody at least will know when it's been replaced um, it's normally recommended every probably f for service but with the way them, I do the mileage, um, I barely think that that will uh, sort of uh, need replacing ever again. Um, now I'm going to work on the k and filter. I've got a k and filter here. Um, let's sort of... Uh, there it is. That's the k and filter. That's going to go on. Um, I'll keep you updated once it's done. Um, then I'll probably move on to sort of uh, taking the inlet manifold off. Glow plugs are going to come off. Um, I've got to replace the glow plug module, which is going to be an absolute utter nightmare because that's on the side. Once that's done, um, I'm going to take this inlet manifold, give it a quick, you know, thorough clean, um, and then blank him off with the swell flap blank in plugs because those swell flaps are an absolute utter nightmare. So they're coming off basically. So that's it. I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, so far, so good. Everything's gone on quite beautifully. Um, so I'll give you guys, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, well, well oh, I'm, I'm gone. Another thing, the ABS pump needs repairing. That's got to come off. That's a big job. That. So I've got a trolley jack, as I said um, before, and I think I may have uploaded the video. I'm not quite sure. Um, I think, and uh, this is it, really. So I'll speak to you later. Bye.